Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is second video in the Ethernet series, and today we will start with UDP server. Well, most of you know the reason for starting with UDP. I did a poll on the YouTube, and here is the result. So I am going to go with UDP first, then TCP, and later with the HTTP. And after covering all of them, we will move to Netcon with our TOS. Please watch previous video about the hardware connection, as I am not going to explain much about that part. UDP is the simplest of all the protocols. This is because it does not need any connection to be established between the server and the client. You simply connect, and start the transfer. It have its own advantages and disadvantages. You can read about them somewhere else, as I am not explaining that part. So let's start the video, and create a new project in Cube IDE. I am using F7 board for this tutorial. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Here is our Cube MX, and let's enable the Ethernet. This entire setup looks too messy, so I am clearing the pinouts first. Now enable the Ethernet RMII. Make sure you cross check the pins with the schematics, as CubeMX sometimes assigns the wrong pins by default. Alright now let's enable the clocks first. I am choosing the external high speed crystal to provide the clock. Configure the clocks according to your board. Now let's go back to Ethernet, and change this to zero, as I am using onboard module. Enable the interrupt also. This is it for the Ethernet setup, now we will configure the lightweight IP. Disable the DHCP, and here we will provide the static IP for our module. Leave everything else as it is. I am going to use the same memory size, just like last time. That's it, just leave everything else to default. Let me just enable the cache. This is it for the setup, click save to generate the project now. Here is our main file. First thing we are going to do is check the connection, and to do that we will just do the ping, same as the last time. I am fast forwarding this, as I have already covered this in the previous video. Let's build and flash it. Now we will ping to the IP address that we assigned to the module. It's not working, looks like something is off. Okay, this should be input, not in it. Let's try again. It's flashed successfully.
it's working now? So our hardware connections is ok, and now we can go to the UDP part. Let's copy the UDP server files in our project. I took some functions from the SD's examples, and I tried to write a simplified version, so that it would be easier to explain it. So let's see what's going on here. Here are the steps to implement a UDP server, and this is the source where I got them. You can check out the website. Anyway, in order to implement the UDP server, we need to create the UDP socket, bind it to the server address, wait for the packet to arrive from the client, process that packet, and repeat this process. Let's see how it is implemented here. We have the server init function. Here we are creating the UDP block first. Then we need to bind this block to the IP address and the local port. First we need to convert the address to a 32-bit integer format. And then bind it to the block we just created, using the function UDP bind. Here 7 is the local port for the module that is the server port. Next we need to wait for the packet to arrive from the client. To do this, we can set up a receive callback, which will be called whenever a client sends something. If we check out this function, it takes the control block as the first parameter, and the second parameters is the receive function. This receive function is our receive callback, which have been defined here. As I mentioned, this callback will be called, when the client sends, some data to the server. We can do the processing inside this callback itself, or you can create another function for that. Here pbuff is the packet buffer structure, and it contains the information related to the packet, sent by the client. Information like the payload, its size etc. We also have the UDP control block and it contains the information about the client, and the server. Information like the IP address, port, etc. Here we will first create a packet buffer, that we are going to send. Then I am mixing the data send by the client, with some additional data. Then we will allocate the memory for this packet buffer. And copy the data into it. Next we will connect to the client. The address and port for the client are the parameters of this function itself. And finally send the data to the client. In the end, free all the memories that were allocated before. That's it, now let's build it once. We will call this UDP server init in our main function. Also need to include the header file here. This is the only function we need to call, and as I mentioned before, it will initialize the rest of them. That's it, let's test it now. I am going to use the Hercules as the UDP client. Enter the server address, and the server port. And the local port can be anything.
Let's start this. Client will initiate the transfer, so I am sending test. And we got the response from the server. This here is the same string that we sent to the server. Let's try something else. And you can see, we are receiving the data just alright. Here you can see, the receive callback does all the job. It allocates the RAM for the buffer. Then copy the data into the buffer. Then connects to the client, and sends the data. Let's say we want to get the IP address of the client for some processing. The address which is passed here is a 32-bit integer, and we need to convert it into the proper address format. We can do that by using this function here, IP address NTOA. Let's pass the 32-bit address to this, and it will do the conversion, and will give us the address as a string. Let's test this part. I am putting a breakpoint right in front of it. This receive callback will be called, when the server receives some data from the client. Ok let me put a breakpoint in the next line. Now you can see, we got the address as the string. This is the address of the client. If you want to confirm it, you can just run ipconfig on your Windows machine. And here is the address. The client port is 12. Which is exactly what we are listening at. If you need the IP and port for some data processing, you can get them like this. So here we are making use of the payload, that we receive from the client. You can write another function to handle the data. I will show that part in the TCP programming, as the things are going to get more complicated there. And by the way, we can still run ping test. This ethernet if input function handles the incoming request, and based on what protocol is being used, it can call the necessary functions. So we will pretty much use the same code in TCP also. This is it about the UDP server. I hope you understood it. The next video will cover the UDP client. If you are getting hard fault, watch the connection videos properly. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, be safe, and have a nice day ahead.